Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Fall 2023 New Jersey Film Festival Filmmaker Q&A series. Today, we actually don't have a filmmaker here. We have the lead actor of a wonderful feature film that we received from Singapore called Hashtag Look At Me. And we're going to be showing this film as part of our 42nd annual New Jersey Film Festival, which will be taking place online and at Rutgers University between September 8th and October 8th. We'll be showing a variety of different programs. There's about 20 films that are in competition for best feature, best short film, best documentary, et cetera. And if you stick around at the end of this session, I'll show you how you can buy tickets. But if you need quick and dirty information, you go to our website, which is njfilmfest.com, click on current events, and then hit the red button that says tickets info um, for the New Jersey Film Festival for the fall 2023 season. But today we have this amazing actor here. He's the lead. He actually plays two roles in this film. And it's called Hashtag Look At Me, which is set in Singapore and is based on true events. Is that correct, Yao? Yeah, it's based on true events. Based on true events. So Yao is the lead actor. And to my uh, left is Katie Scrivani. She's the assistant director of the New Jersey Film Festival, and she's going to help me ask Yao a ton of questions. So hi, Katie. All right, everybody. So tell us a little bit about this film, Yao. It deals with two twin brothers. Um, you can two see twin brothers, yes. You can see Yao here and Yao here too. <laughs> I don't know how how they did this shot. I guess that's my first question for you. I'll ask that first yeah. and we'll talk about the actual subject matter. How how was uh, the the director is Ken Quick and uh, Yes, Ken Quick. And I, I wonder how this was done. Can you tell us? Um so I think uh that's definitely part of the uh, the film's draw is how to do this kind of doubling on a, on a shoestring budget we shot on, um, and we I think we employed um, man I hope Ken wrote for saying this but we employed a split screen technology which mm -hmm. is very uh, kind of basic and low tech considerably but it basically involves shooting the scene twice with the camera locked off and not touched. Wow. And then you create an invisible line, and then um, you you cr you basically rely on performance, and you time the performance with the reactions and with a body double, so that you're doing eye line, and you're doing performance uh, with the rhythm of the scene going back and forth. So I had um, a co-star who you whose face you never see, but who the back of the head. Of mm. whom you see, and his name is Shane Marjuki. He's actually the originator of the role back wow. when Ken and he were uh, creating the story together. Mm. And um, he and I are around the same height, and we uh, rehearsed every scene over and over and over again until we kind of got it musically. And then we um, we shot it with my face in the back of his head, and vice versa. Yeah, it's magical. I I honestly thought. It was two different people. I really thought it was twins. Yeah. And then Ooh, you get the cool. credits and you say, whoa, Yao played both of those roles. Unbelievable. And so it's really a, a magical film, an important film. And I, I wrote down a, a, dis, a description, so I'll read it to you guys. It's a tour de, por a tour de force performance. This comes from uh, the New York Asian Film Festival blurb. I, I stole it from them. And uh, Yao plays both roles, and he plays a renegade, a renegade vlogger named Sean, and his gay identical twin is Ricky. And supercharging this exhilarating, damning, and morally essential fable about social media celebrity cancel culture and the erosion of human rights, um, this film is really going to play with your emotions all the way through. But uh, I think it just grabs you and it doesn't let you go until the very end of the film. So, yeah. And it is based on true events. And I wrote down Amos. Loosely Be based. Loosely based. Cobbled together like a Frankenstein of, of true events. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I mean, it's uh, inspired by Amos V, who was a vlogger. Yee. 
Amos oh, Amos oh, Yee. Yeah. Yee, excuse me. Yeah. I can't even read my own writing. Amos Yee. And he, this was back in 2015, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, Ken, Ken and Jeremy can correct me if I'm misquoting this, but I think uh, Ken and Shane kind of began uh, their, you know, they, they were talking about what would happen or no, Ken was thinking about what would happen if somebody had had uh, the same reaction um, um, from an institutional standpoint um, and police, but what if they were saying something uh, noble? What if it was for a good cause mm -hmm. rather than just uh, self-aggrandizement or um, getting more views? Um, what if... Uh, Sean actually had something meaningful to say. What if he was fighting for somebody? And I think that was the germ of the rest of the movie. Hmm. Cool. Katie, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, so kind of going off the last question, you were playing two very different characters. How do you get in the headspace for each one? I guess. Like uh, if... Well, <laughs> yeah. The beauty of it was that uh, Shane and I created both characters together and we were both like okay how would ricky sit how would sean sit how would ricky move how would sean move and then when i was actually doing the scenes you never see shane's face um because he's you know demarcated by that invisible line mm -hmm. but i was actually acting with another person um and his and i his and my performances i actually got to play off of a real person mm -hmm. um so it didn't really feel like i was looking towards myself if that makes any sense. So when I was Ricky, I was Ricky. When I was Sean, and when I was Sean, but I was reacting to Shane as either of those people. So it really was <laughs> both of us memorizing and embodying two different people. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like, I mean, this is one of the few films that we've shown from Singapore. I mean, we have shown a number of them, but this is, I think, the first cool. feature film that we've shown. And um, I, I wondered, as far as society goes in Singapore, how repressive a regime has it been over the years in terms of allowing, you know, the freedom, sexual freedom. And I, I know that, you know, drug culture wise, you don't go to Singapore with you know, any heroin in your pocket. Well, I, I don't think you go anywhere with that. But I mean, there's certain things that you could be imprisoned for a long period of time in Singapore if you, you bring them into the country. And I wondered how, I mean, I know this film was going to be shown at the Singapore International Film Festival. It was listed, but then it was banned in the country. So uh, talk about the politics of trying to get a film made in Singapore and the, the ramifications of your film vis-a-vis -vis that that uh, dilemma, you know, that situation. I can't I can't really speak to it from a producer standpoint. Um, okay. That battle uh, took place while uh, I was still finishing up school, um, mm -hmm. and I think Jeremy Penn and Pam, um, the other executive producer, mm -hmm. um, really took on the lion's share of that of that fight. Um, so I can't really speak to the difficulties or, or the minutia of that struggle itself. But I think um, that I think like with like with any government, there is a specific viewpoint um, that that the mainstream can follow. I think it happens in the states as well. Um, and with Singapore, I think they're they're very particular about protecting certain status quos and certain ideals, mm. um, which can uh, result in uh, restrictions and boundaries. Um, which I think all all Singapore creatives and writers and artists are aware of, mm. um, and so it really becomes a dance. Um, of how to get your message across um, within the guidelines, um, because they're very, they're very, uh, 
they're very clear they're they're published and people are very aware of them mm -hmm. um and so i think it, it it is it is kind of a dialogue and over time you know from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s the relationship with the powers that be has changed well, that's um for the better both in explicit and implicit ways um i'm not really sure i can't i can't speak to that never having never produced something myself i've always been I've always been um, an actor in, in Singapore. Yeah. Katie, do you have another question? Um, that was my next question. So give me a second to think of one. No worries. So my, I guess I also wanted to ask that, you know, there the film itself features you and your brother. You're both different in terms of your sexual orientation, but you have a very supportive single mom who's a school teacher. Yeah. And after this one event where Sean um, kind of is, Sean goes with his girlfriend who is behind me, right? Sean is next to his girlfriend. And- Shui they, Ching, Ching Shui, yeah. Yes, and she, that's Mia, right? Mia? Yeah, Mia. She plays Mia. And they go to a Baptist um, service and mm -hmm. which is quite beautiful. And you said to me that the it was low budget. <laughs> this thing looks like millions of dollars. I mean, it really <laughs> looks, uh, it's absolutely stunning. The cinematography is amazing. The acting is great. The production values seem very high. So I, I if you think it's low budget, wow, to me, it looks like a high budget. <laughs> so, but, you know, they go and they, they, he was witnessing a performance and then the lead pastor comes out and basically trashes the, you know, gay community. And right. uh, that sets off a chain of events. Do you want to take it from there? What happens after that? Um, well, I think that's interesting about the story is that you see uh, a family dealing with um, the consequences of being uh, outliers in this in this um, in this society, mm -hmm. um, in this city, really, and also in the day in this day and age where something that you say can be recorded and shared and taken out of context and edited and 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 in in a, in, a, in an ironic way, Sean kind of does that um, as well with the pastor's um, speech. Um, but because Sean is doing that in Singapore, where there are very cl clear rules about what you can and can't do, the repercussions are much greater than what you might expect um, in the West, say, for example. Um, and so uh, you kind of get to see the story take a really interesting turn and go down um, a rabbit hole that would be that is kind of unexpected. And you get to see what happens to a young boy um when when the story uh ken's story kind of uh uh accelerates things um i mean the first time i watched the movie it was it was harrowing it was a thriller you know um and i i didn't realize i mean you know because like when i signed on to the script i was reading the script and i was like wow that's very interesting it's very interesting very interesting but watching it and experiencing it in a, in a cinema is a totally different experience because the way that um, Ollie, um, who is our uh, editor, and Russell um, created these shots, these like visceral shots, and like the pacing of it uh, really, uh, really kind of fucked me up. I was, I was, um, I was kind of breathless after mm -hmm. the end of it. But I mean, also in awe of uh, watching our work for the first time, but also like, as an audience member, just like um, disturbed. <laughs> There's a lot of. I don't know if that's a good word to sell a movie. No, that's absolutely true. There's so many disturbing images, but at the same time, they're painted so real, and you can just imagine these situations taking place. I mean, because yeah. you know we see, uh, you know, Sean in jail, and all the things he has to go to go through, and. They're so believable and so real that, um, you know, 
anyway, I think the film starts out quite lightheartedly where, you know, the two twins um, play pranks on their mom and, yeah. um, and, but it very quickly devolves after that experience um, mm. of going to the church. So I think. I have to say, I have to shout out Pamela, who is the producer and the mom. Um, she is a fantastic yeah, she's amazing. in that role I mean, as well. Uh, the ensemble itself, I think you and her are just amazing. As, as you are, could, I mean, she would, she would, sorry, I have to say this, she would be performing and then like, you know, Ken would say cut and then she would go and she would walk off and then she would immediately start producing, like telling people to move this, move that, take a call. Then he'd be like, okay, we have to roll again. And then she would get back on and do it. It's like, I mean, if I was playing two roles, so was she, you know? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, she is truly <laughs> wonderful. Uh, Katie, uh, please. Yeah, so, um, okay, you mentioned a shoe, shoestring budget, but obviously this does not look like that. How long start to finish did this take to produce, to act, produce everything? Oof. I mean, they were writing it since 2015. And then, and then Ken picked it up again I think, man, I'm just, this is all going to be apocryphal. Um, I think Ken picked it up again in 2018. And that's maybe when he was starting to look for um, um, funding and getting the team together, Russell Morton, our DP. Um, and then he approached me with it in 2019. And then two months later, we were shooting and production took I think like 26 days yeah yeah it was chock a block it was chock a block didn't feel it doesn't but, feel like it it's, it seems like it was the, the gestation period for the film seems like it would you know a year and a half or something like that just but I, right. you know, I think you know as you're watching the film you can see um that everyone is prepared you know it looked like everything must have gone smoothly or more or less smoothly in terms of the shooting process um but i you know i don't know i, I wanted to take i'm glad you think that i wanted to take this opportunity to read some of the judges comments from our festival and cool. usually what happens is we have a number of different types of people that look at these films we have my students who are interns they get credit university credit cool. or Great. helping us run the film festival. They watch, you know, anything like 10 to 15 films per to 10 days over a six month period. And wow. um, they have to evaluate each film. So oh, um, I love film festivals. They, they are, we're very, very diligent. Uh, you know, I know some film festivals, they don't even watch some films that we would never do that. I'm a filmmaker too. And we treat every film as if it was our own and we try to nurture it mm. as much as we can. So it's not just students though, it's other previous winners. We also have people from the press that are evaluating the films as well as academics like myself. So it's a nice broad range. It's e evenly distributed amongst female and male. And it's also different walks of life, people with different backgrounds. So I was able to pull out judges comments and I'd like to read them for you um the way we score a film is from zero to ten with ten being the best zero being terrible and then they're broken down in, by category but I want to just read you the comments and give you the score for each one uh this person um wrote gave it a 10 which is very rare and wow. wrote an exciting fresh and gorgeously shot film with a spectacular cast and it's a very human piece of work and the message of standing up in the face of injustice is timely as ever. The escalation of pacing and the shifting of tones is done with great craft and extremely well done on all fronts. So you get a 10, that's really magnificent. That's amazing. And usually, Thank you, person. Um, you know, if a film scores sevens, eights, nines, usually they get in, but yours got a 10 from this person. This other person gave it a nine, wonderfully paced and had really interesting and well-developed and fleshed out characters. There was not a single dull moment and I felt hooked throughout the entire watch, which I can attest hey. to. I think that's definitely true too. Those first two were by guys, young men. This one is by an elder woman and she gave it an eight. 
And this was a really enjoyable film that had strong and important messages. I love the bond between the family members and the little moments of humor in between the heaviness. So yeah. uh, there's others, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of taste. I think the lowest score was a seven. So we knew right away we were going to sh show this once the juries watched this film, which was oh, fairly fantastic. early in the process. And I think yeah. the fact that we are a humanist film festival, we want to celebrate man yeah. and definitely focus on injustice. And I think your film certainly does that. So kudos. Uh, Katie, yeah. I think we have time for one more question before I share screen. Um, I will leave that one to you. All right. Well, I wrote down a few other things and they were um, targeting how how did Ken find you? How were you selected for this project? I can't remember. I think I was working on a play with him. Either I was working on a, on a play with him at the time or he approached me first and then I started working on a play with him. But he was writing uh, a play called This Is What Happens to Pretty Girls about... Um, uh, me too me too culture hmm. um and um yeah it was it was it was either or but we'd never really met we'd never met before but he'd seen he'd seen me performing plays in singapore cool yeah. and the re your relationship with ken once you started working i mean how, oh fantastic how was he able to get this performance out of you I mean, I I think the fact that you have both of these things going on with these two characters and you're able to keep them separate is just amazing on its own. And yeah. I, mean, I really thought they were two separate characters. I really did while I was watching it. I wow. think a lot of the jurors felt the same way. Katie, you felt the same way, I'm sure, too. Uh, so, I mean, wow. how was he able to get this out of you? What did he what kind of training did you go through to kind of I, I mean, I guess working with the other with your body double was the way to do it correct yeah yeah definitely and shane is i've, I've acted with shane before. Mm. and shane's a shane's a fantastic actor in his own right the only reason he couldn't play sean is because he he, he aged out of the role and so i aged in mm. um and uh i i think ken is very Ken and I had to share, had to have a lot of conversations beforehand and like make sure we were on the same page with references. Mm. And so, um, you know, as long as we were speaking the same kind of language, talking about books, talking about films, and he, I think Ken forefronted developing a relationship with me um, where we would like text each other or call each other. And sometimes I would call him and be like, oh, I just noticed the Sean thing and, mm. and stuff like that. So it was very, it was very much collaborative in that sense he kind of left me to my own devices in terms of creating a Sean thing or a Ricky thing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he would ask me when it came down to the wire or when we were actually shooting, he'd be like, do you think Sean would do this? And then he would, you know, he would leave that up to me. So there was a lot of trust. There was a lot of trust. I, I, I think that's yeah. that you need to have that for sure. And the, working yeah. with actors yeah. and you know Katie and I are working on a film too it's it's something that you develop yeah. and you start the actor starts to figure out what the director wants and you know it's a slow yeah. process but when you have a, a month or a 28 day shooting schedule it's got to happen very quickly yeah and we had rehearsal beforehand too he was very clear about getting rehearsal in yeah 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 cool well let, let's share screen so I could show the audience how to buy tickets and where did you go here let's just switch that over here and we need to go to chrome all right so i jumped the gun a little bit let's go here this is normally the website where you would go and you would go to njfilmfest.com and then you would hit current events and normally everything would be here, but since the pandemic, we've been a hybrid festival or online mm. exclusively. Initially, we were just online because you couldn't go anywhere. And But now we're a hybrid because we have people all over the world that watch our movies. So we didn't want to yeah. close them out. So we show the films online and in person. So what you want to do is once you get this kind of placeholder, 
you've got to click on that red link. And the red link will show you our catalog page. And the catalog page lists all the films by genre and the film programs. And you can also explore the site. And I recommend going to Back to Festival site, which is our welcome page. And the welcome page has four red buttons. And each one of those has information for you. If you want to buy an all access pass, which is $100, it's a great deal. All the films are available at half price, essentially. You click on this button. If you want to see all the films um, by schedule and linear, you would go to the schedule page and you can just kind of mm -hmm. scroll down. And each of the programs are divvied up by this red line. Nice big pictures mm -hmm. and descriptions of all the films. And we work our way all the way down because I haven't really told you the date or the time or the place. We'll be showing this film is on Sunday, October 1st at 2023. Um, and it's online for 24 hours and in person at 5 p.m. And this is the pastor. This is a picture of the pastor. And a description is here so you can check out more information. Adrian Pong. Thank you for doing yeah. that. And then you can also go to the film guide, which has got all this information about each and every one of the films. And of course, look at me is right at the top. You click at it yeah. and you can get the information there too. So I'm going to stop sharing and say the ticket that you purchase is $15 and um, for one program, and it's $100 for the pass. And you get for that money access to both the online version and the in-person one. Um, the screening is at 5 p.m. in the afternoon, and I believe Ken is coming. I, I really believe Ken yes. is going to be awesome. there. And so there'll be a QA and a after the in-person screening. So I um, wish I could be there. Yeah, I wish we could teleport you because you're in Bali right now. So um, I'll be shooting them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I want to say thank you to you for, for hanging out with us. And I really appreciate it. And it was lovely meeting you now. No, absolutely. And thank you so much for posting uh, the film online as well. Somebody in Singapore actually stopped me on the street on your website because they oh, right be cool very cool very cool yeah well thank you so much and thank you katie also thank you yeah thank you katie mm -hmm.